Welcome back. Now to our next conversation. Niger's financial and banking sector has experienced remarkable transformation over the last uh, 15 to 20 years. As long gone are the days of tally numbers or even traveling from uh, one point to another to perform uh, a banking transaction. There are now more tech-enabled products and uh, services such as the USSD, bank, internet banking, POS terminals, you know, that have made financial services more accessible, flexible, and uh, convenient. But what are the next trends to look out for? We have uh, join us now, Mr. Ibrahim Ibita, uh, the uh, co-founder and CEO, uh, Leatherback, joining us on the program. Good morning. Great to have you. Hi, good morning, Ladi. Thanks for having me. Yeah, so tell me, what, are the, uh, what is the current trend and innovation in the financial uh, transaction ecosystem? Uh, well, I mean, it's been, like you mentioned, um, the, the financial sector in Nigeria has grown rapidly over the last couple of years. I mean, um, um, going to those days when um, you needed to move from one place to another just to get money from one banking source to another. You've seen, um, and I always say practically that the Nigerian banking system is realistically one of the most developed in the world, largely because we've had things like instant payments way before many other um, countries across Europe and a couple of other countries outside Africa have had instant payments. So beyond instant payments and a couple of other USSD-based solutions that have that have rapidly um, come up over the last couple of years, I mean, we've seen um, trends largely around um, um, client experience. I mean, clients are now more um, businesses are now more particular about giving clients a more immersive experience um, as against the regular traditional transactional methods that the traditional banks um, used to offer their clients over the last couple of years. I mean, it's now more than just save money with me and make payments with me. It's now how businesses are making the effort to place themselves in the average life cycle of their particular client, the day-to-day -day, um, regular activities, just to give them the best kind of experience available. I mean, and you, you see more businesses focusing more a lot on automation to make sure they drive operational efficiency. Um, you are seeing different and advancements in the adaptability of blockchain technology way beyond um, the cryptocurrencies, which quite a number of people are, well, are, are, are used to. I mean, and cloud infrastructure is also another thing. I mean, um, you've seen instances where large multinationals and large corporates and even large financial services firms are now adopting cloud services as rapidly as possible. To, and it, it also goes a long way in allowing them to meet up with some of the environmental commitments too, and um, promoting um, decarbonization and also their policies and sustainability. Um, and most importantly, of course, the concept of work. Um, after the whole COVID-19 debacle that happened over the last couple of years, I mean, you've seen instances where um, concept of work has changed rapidly. Um, businesses now need to um, adjust to what um, individual talents are re required to get work done immensely and also the kind of services and products they offer clients because most times you find that you can't give them the one-on-one -on -one, um, direct experience you used to in the regular right. I, I, I'm banking halls and all yeah right and and you did uh, mention you know blockchain and you know the e naira has been out for for a while now how would you describe you know, acceptance of the Ian era. I know in China, they're finding it hard even accepting the digital yuan there. Yeah, I mean, um, it's, 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 every new technology takes time for, for adaptability. Um, it takes a while. People need to, time to get used to it, need time to understand it. I know the Central Bank, for example, has, has done a lot in trying to educate Nigerians a lot about the importance of the Ian era. The banks have gone a long way, you know, also trying to, um, let Nigerians um, they just put it on their banking applications and give Nigerians the ability to gain more access to it. So I think it's just a matter of time. But gradually, that we, we should definitely see more adaptability around that. Okay, but how would you rate you know, Nigeria in the scheme of things? You know, how much of these trends have been you know, adopted at this point? Wow. <laughs> um, I mean, I, I think, I think the, the answers are there for us to see. You've had um, we recently had a um, float away, I mean, one of the, being one of the a unicorn last year, and now they're valued at over $3 billion. I mean, Africa alone generally has had over five to six unicorns over the last um, two years or so. Um, now, narrowing it back to Nigeria, I mean, talking largely around the, ad the adopt ad adopting um, agency, innovative agency banking-based solutions, which is really, really driving financial inclusion across Nigeria. Um, you've seen the advent of data aggregators and payment enablers that are really enhancing business growth and promoting interoperability. I mean, um, you're seeing businesses getting more data-driven and um, payment aggregation has gone just beyond 
make payments, integrate into APIs and receive payments now. It's actually looking to harness proper data to help businesses make um, unique strategic decisions to enhance business growth. Um, and financial inclusion is also going a lot more beyond um, just local, um, the local bit of things now. I mean, you're seeing Nigerians actively getting involved in the global talent space and in the global um, business space, either as investors, as regular travelers, as, um, as, as business owners themselves too. And you're seeing unique solutions coming out um, rapidly, giving Nigerians um, the ability to play their part in the global financial market, which is part of what we do at Leatherback anyway. And um, you also find instances where um, you're seeing many proponents of open banking solutions to enable further connectivity and also in increase interoperability amongst our existing financial banking system. And um, yeah, I mean, there, there's so many other things. You can, we could go on and on around micro insurance solutions that are driving, that are using technology to actually drive ad adaptability, um, ad the adoption um, of insur insurance, um, which is also pushing insur insurance inclusion to in one way or the other. So. Um, the, the trends are there, and I, I think over the next couple of months, we will all year, months we will see quite a lot of more unique, innovative solutions coming out because the 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 the, the platform for everything, like I always say, is um, payments. Once you are able to give people the ability to collect, receive payments, harness data, the sky is the limit. You will see, you you will find unique, innovative solutions keep rapidly right. um, being churned out by Nigerians. Yeah. Right, but but it's obviously not without you know challenges. What would you say are the challenges you know of, of, of these trends in Nigeria? You know, in relation to you know an everyday Nigerian. Well, I mean, the, the number one challenge you always find, I mean, will be um, protection and security. I think that's really key. Um, that um, um, you find instances where, and I, I will say that kudos to the regulators. I mean, regulators have gone a long way to set the right kind of standards for um, financial services firms and startups to make sure client funds are protected, transaction, transactions are protect, protected, data is protected and all. But um, still, you find that um, as, as this unique, innovative solutions keep getting churned out, um, new, unique methods are being developed to, um, which can be, which, which can hinder, um, which can be dangerous to clients' um, clients transactions, basically. So you find instances where um, Companies need to, companies face unique hard um, times in trying to ensure they maintain the sanctity of their products, right? And um, like I said, um, the, the other thing is also regulation. Um, the regulation is not catching up fast enough to some of these growing technological trends. And um, I, I will say we need a lot more heavy research, um, heavy and fast research on the side of our of regulators across, across Africa to just make sure they're catching up with these unique trends because Things are growing rapidly. You see new, unique solutions coming out every day, and you find that the regulatory provisions are not even ready to cater to some of these unique solutions. Um, so yeah, and also um, I'll say what part of and some of the challenges that major um, startups face around is also availability of talent. I mean, um, one thing that has rapidly been creeping into, um, and I'll say hindering potentially hindering growth of some of that some of the startups around around Africa is. The fact that you find that that unique talent pool that we used to have access to on our own in Nigeria is no longer the case. The world is rapidly dipping into Nigeria's talent pool and making it harder for local firms to compete. So you need that that large, that regular, steady talent pool to keep things going. So that's um, the brain drain the issue there. Exactly, exactly. It's a major brain drain issue. Um, so it, it's rapidly, grad, it's gradually eating in, and um, you'll find that uh, it's something that needs to be solved rapidly. But you find firms around that are trying to solve, solve, solve for those things, and um, uh, but it's, it's still a major problem, basically. So yeah, regulation, protection, and security; those are major things that I will say are part of the top challenges. Of and, that, that, and and that. talking about uh, security, I, I, I read recently the Nigeria Communication Commission, you know, alerted. Uh, Nigerians to a newly discovered malicious software that uh, steals users' banking app logging credentials on Android devices. Quite scary. It's like the more tech, the, the more techie problems here. Well, I mean, I'll say <laughs> that, that it should really be the more tech, the more solutions. The truth is that there, there, there isn't any unique solution that doesn't come with its own um, potential adverse effect. Um, the only thing we can try to do, which also boils, boils down to what I mentioned earlier about the fact that 
um, regulation and um, the regulation has not caught up some of these technological trends to, to set the right standards um, for some of these services that are being rendered um, across Nigeria. Um, you find that as much as but this, this, this innovate, these solutions are needed, they're required, they're actually solving genuine problems that individual Nigerians and business owners really need. However, um, they don't come with their, they, they, they all come with side effects. Majority of them come with side effects. Now, some of these side effects are standards. I'll give you typical examples. If you're getting a PSSP license in Nigeria, the CBN has set specific standards that you have to make sure your PCI DSS certified. You have to make sure your ISO certified, NCIL. You, are, um, you, got, you have to make sure you have data protection certification and all, just to maintain um, system integrity, right? Um, but that's for payments. There's so many other unique solutions that there are angles um, of vulnerability that need to be addressed. So I think it's what we should be addressing here is, yes, it's more tech. It's not more tech, more problems. It's actually more tech, more solutions. However, um, we need to do a lot more work. Um, to set the standards for most of these unique, unique innovative solutions to to make to 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 meet up to those standards before they can roll out their product. I think the more we put effort in that, the more uh, yeah, the more we yeah. find that things will get stable. All right. Well, as a stakeholder, there, how, how do you advise Nigerians, you know, in adopting these trends or uh, innovations in terms of integrity? Well, I, I, I'll say number one thing should be always prioritize regulation. Um, it's it's easy to, I, I've seen tons of instances where um, startups use the word disruption and um, we're changing the status quo. It's amazing. Yeah, it's what it's what we are really doing. But at the same time, you find that there needs to be structure put in place. And um, um, I think I will advise um, Nigerians to make sure they always prioritize um looking out for regulated products and services before they put their funds in or carry out their regular transaction um, to, to, to give them the right kind of comfort they need. You find that to an extent, even though, like I mentioned, regulatory bodies have not caught up yet, but there are still standards that have been set. Um, they should look out for specific certifications, some of them NCIL, ISO, PCI, DSS, and ask questions of these startups too. Um, there are standards that needs to be met. I mean, we we, we operate in the UK at Leatherback and we 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 fervently um, have to make sure we meet up to the GDPR requirements because we understand how important data protection is um, to the UK government and also across Europe. So the same standards too are out there in Nigeria and are questions that need to be asked. Um, are these things on their website? Are we mindful of data protection? Are we asking questions around how is my money protected? Is, are my funds insured? Right? Where's my money being kept? Um, so those are the kind of things that we need to make sure we look out for um, before um, we start adopting some of this thing, right. um, particularly um, in terms of security. Yeah. All right. So uh, very briefly now, you know, for a long time, the story of African, you know, fintech has been uh, payments uh, focused. Are we going to see any, you know, African P2P lending platforms, you know, anytime soon or, you know, any great uh, insure tech uh, companies? Well, I'll say I, I, I mentioned this earlier during the course of our conversation, and I'm glad you also brought it up again. Payments has set the landscape. Payments has set the pace for everyone. And off the top of payments, you see that different things now start cropping up. You've seen the likes of Tangerine Life, Cassava, Pula Advisors have been around for a while now. Those guys are really trying to push the frontiers of insure technology, um, insure tech across Africa. And um, I, I think you will find a lot more about the next couple of uh, couple of years crop, crop, cropping up because we have, I mean, yes, financial inclusion, has been largely around giving people access to banking solutions, basic banking solutions, but people actually need access to um, to insurance solutions too. And you find that some of these startups are really pushing the frontiers of that. So you, you will see a lot more of that. I mean, peer-to-peer -peer lending, um, yeah, it was it was a, it was a trend over the last couple of years, and I think we saw a decline there. But that was probably because um, the, I, I think that the, the the system was not set up for it right at the right at that time. Okay. But I, I think over the next couple of years, you'll find that you'll find more adoption of that and more startups um, coming up with unique solutions around, around those sectors. All right. It'll be interesting to see what the next uh, five to 10 years uh, looks like uh, in this space. We'll keep tracking it. Thank you so much, Ibrahim Ibita, the CEO, uh, Leatherback, for coming on the program today. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me.